Welcome back to our solo playthrough narrated story of Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk. Previously, for our valiant band of heroes, the party, accompanied by Sildar, arrived in Fandolin. Sildar thanks them and heads to the Stonehill Inn, and advising a visit to Elmina at Barthens and a mention of the Red Brands. At Barthens provisions, Elmina warmly welcomes them, expresses worry for Gundren, and shares the troubles with the Red Brands. The party then headed to the Stonehill Inn. They ordered ale and meals and mingled with locals to gather information about the Red brands. They leveled up, and after a restful night's sleep, they each pursue their individual goals. Elena visits the Shrine of Luck, meeting Sister Garielle, where she was given a new quest dealing with a banshee. Alden, learning about the Red Brand's presence from Darren, Gareth met Sildar and confronted Townmaster Harbin about the Red Brands. Sildar also informed Gareth about Yarno's disappearance. Finn headed to Fandolin's Minor Exchange. Halia offers advice on dealing with the Red Brands and suggests either finding a way around them or taking down Glassstaff for a reward of a hundred gold pieces. The party then met again at the Stonehill Inn and determined they must deal with the Red Brands before they do anything else. The party, full of determination, heads out of the Stonehill Inn and heads east towards the sleeping giant. The world around them goes on as normal. Birds can be heard chirping, squirrels flitting amongst the trees, and the townspeople of Fandolin scurry about their normal days. In just a few short minutes, the party reaches the infamous Tap House. The sleeping giant is a ramshackle tap room at the east end of town. Several disheveled, surly humans linger on the covered porch. Perched on empty ale barrels or leaning against the wall, they all wear grimy scarlet cloaks. Their stares are fixed on the party as they approach. A tall, wiry man with unkempt, greasy hair that falls into his eyes also sports a scruffy beard. His gaze, sharp and predatory, and his scarred knuckles suggest a history of brawling. Well, well. Well, here's a whole pack of lost little puppies, the ruffian sneers, spitting on the ground as the party approaches, his comrades smirking in agreement. Gareth, standing tall, meets their gaze without flinching. We're no lost pups, just travelers passing through. A second red brand, who is a burly figure, broad-shouldered and heavily muscled, with a shaved head that reveals a network of faded tattoos. His scarlet cloak hangs loosely over a stained leather jerkin. His features are weathered, and a sinister glint in his eyes hints at a cruel streak. Chuckling, he darkly pipes up. Travelers with a lot of nerve coming this way. Don't you know who runs things around here? Finn, her eyes sharp and unwavering, responds coolly. We've heard rumors. Seems like a group of bullies in red cloaks think they own this town. A third man, with a perpetual sneer etched on his lips, his face adorned with an unkempt beard. His scarlet cloak is draped over a patched, tattered shirt and his eyes gleam with a mix of mischief and malice. He steps forward menacingly. You'd be smart to watch your mouth, little lady. We red brands don't take kindly to strangers poking their noses where they don't belong. Alden, voice steady but tinged with resolve, adds, We're just looking for a bit of information. We won't cause trouble if you don't. The first red brand, with a cruel smirk on his face, leans in closer. Information isn't free, friend. You'll have to pay the toll if you want to walk away from here in one piece. Elena, expression calm but unyielding, speaks up. We're not here to pay tribute to thugs. We are here for information, and we'll find it one way or another. The tension in the air crackles as both parties stand their ground. The atmosphere charged with hostility. The red brands exchange glances, their faces contorted in a mix of annoyance and anger. The standoff reaches its boiling point, and it's clear that words alone won't resolve this conflict. The tension in the air snaps like a drawn bowstring as the confrontation escalates. Elena's voice rings out, invoking the power of Saluna as she attempts to toll the very soul of Roderick. However, in a twist of cruel fate, Roderick's willpower proves indomitable as he weathers the spell with an almost preternatural resilience. Seizing the moment, Gareth steps forward, 
his long sword slicing through the air with precision. Thane, another red brand, caught off guard by the sudden assault, grunts in pain as the blade bites into his side. The clash of steel against leather fills the air, a cacophony of battle. Gideon, a third red brand, fueled by aggression, lunges at Finn with a sharp swing of his short sword. Yet, Finn's agility is her greatest ally as she deftly sidesteps the attack, her movements graceful and fluid like a dancer in a deadly waltz. In the midst of the chaos, Finn doesn't miss a beat. Her movements are a whirlwind of precision and speed. With a deft thrust, her rapier finds the exposed flank. The blade sinks in, drawing a pained cry. Isolde moves with a fierce determination, her eyes narrowed in predatory focus. Her short sword finds its mark, slashing across Finn's arm with a searing pain. Finn grits her teeth against the onslaught, her resolve unyielding. Alden, eyes burning with arcane intensity, channels the raw power of fire. With a flick of his wrist, a bolt of flames hurls toward Isolde. The searing heat engulfs her, scorching her flesh and drawing a pained scream from her lips. Thane, undeterred by Gareth's initial strike, retaliates with a swift swing of his short sword. Gareth's armor bears the brunt of the blow, the metal ringing with the force of impact. The dance of combat continues, each movement a calculated step towards victory. Meanwhile, Roderick seizes the opportunity presented by Finn's momentary distraction. His short sword strikes true, finding its mark on Finn's side, eliciting a sharp gasp of pain. Elena, fueled by determination, channels the powers of her deity, reaching out to touch his soul with the intent to inflict divine retribution. However, in the heat of the fray, her aim falters and her touch misses its mark, leaving Isolde untouched but wary. Garrus' focus remains unwavering. With a fluid motion, he brings his longsword down upon Thane. The hilt of his blade connects with a resounding impact, and Thane crumples to the ground, unconscious and defeated, the fight drained from him. Gideon shifts his attention towards Finn, his short sword flashing in the dim light. With a swift strike, he aims for Finn's flank, but she anticipates the attack, dodging nimbly out of harm's way. Finn, heightened by adrenaline, retaliates with the precision of a seasoned warrior. Her rapier and short sword flash in the air, aiming for Gideon's exposed form. However, in the heat of the moment, her strikes miss their mark, leaving Gideon unscathed but on high alert. Isolde maintains her focus on Finn, and with a swift, calculated strike, her short sword slices through the air, finding its target. Finn grunts in pain as the blade makes contact, leaving a searing gash along her side. Alden channels the power of fire once more. With a focused determination, he hurls a bolt of flame towards Assault. The searing heat engulfs her once again, scorching her flesh and drawing a another anguished cry from her lips. Roderick presses his assault on Finn. His short sword strikes true, finding its mark once again, and Finn winces in pain, the cumulative effect of the strikes taking its toll. Elena swings her mace with renewed resolve towards Assault. The head of the mace whistles through the air, but Assault's nimble reflexes save her from the blow, allowing her to sidestep the attack with a graceful pivot. Gareth seizes the opportunity presented by Elena's strike. With a swift and precise movement, he brings his longsword down upon Isolde. The blade connects, finding its mark with satisfying impact. Isolde winces in pain, the force of the blow taking its toll. Gideon's short sword darts forward, the blade cutting through the air with precision. The strike finds its target, grazing Finn's side and drawing a sharp hiss of pain. Finn responds with the speed and precision that have become her trademark. Her rapier darts forward, aiming for Gideon's exposed form. The blade finds its mark, striking true and drawing a pained cry from Gideon. With a graceful pirouette, Finn disengages from the fray, putting distance between herself and the assailant. Isolde redirects her attention towards Elena. With a swift, calculated strike, her short sword darts forward, aiming for Elena's vulnerable flank. The blade strikes true, leaving Elena to bear the brunt of the blow. Alden channels the power of fire once more, and with a resolute incantation, he hurls a bolt of flames towards Isolde. However, Isolde's agility proves to be her shield once again, as she narrowly sidesteps the fiery onslaught, the flames licking the air beside her. Roderick shifts his focus to Elena. His short sword cuts through the air, aiming for her exposed form. However, Elena's reflexes prove to be her savior, allowing her to evade the strike with a swift step back. In response, Elena, a beacon of unwavering faith, focuses her divine energy with a solemn invocation. A radiant glow surrounds her as she channels the essence of Saluna. This healing energy 
energy surges through Finn, knitting her wounds together. Finn's breath steadies, her strength renewed by the touch of the divine. Gareth, with a calculating precision, brings down his longsword, finding its mark with a resounding impact. His soul crumples to the ground, unconscious and defeated. The scarlet cloak that once adorned her now lies stained with dirt and blood. Finn wields her dagger with a mix of skill and urgency. In a fateful strike, her dagger finds its mark in Gideon's side. The shock of the blow registers on Gideon's face, his breath coming in ragged gasps. As the light in his eyes dims, Finn realizes the gravity of her actions. Gideon falls, his body growing still. In a whirl of motion, Finn turns her attention to Roderick, her dagger slashing through the air. The blade connects, finding purchase in Roderick's side. He grunts in pain, a flash of anger crossing his features. Alden directs his energy towards Roderick as well. With precision and focus, he conjures a bolt of flames that streaks towards their adversary. The bolt impacts Roderick, scorching his cloak and searing his flesh. Roderick staggers, the flames leaving angry welts in their wake. Roderick, sensing the tide of battle turning against him, makes a quick decision. With nimble footwork and a look of determination in his eye, he disengages and takes off in a desperate attempt to flee the battlefield, his breath ragged with exertion. Elena, fueled by a mixture of determination and duty, takes off after the fleeing ruffian. Her steps are sure, the terrain beneath her feet offering little resistance. She lunges forward, arms outstretched, aiming to grasp Roderick and halt his escape. But Roderick proves nimble, slipping through her grasp with a burst of speed. Gareth, not one to be left behind, joins the pursuit. His strides are long and purposeful, each step bringing him closer to Roderick's fleeing form. With a surge of strength, he lunges forward, his arms wrapping around Roderick's struggling form. The grapple holds in Gareth's powerful frame, asserting dominance over his adversary. The air is thick with tension as the party gathers around Roderick, their eyes fixed on him with a mix of determination and curiosity. Meanwhile, Finn, her footsteps hesitant, makes her way over to where Gideon's lifeless form lies. The fallen leaves crunch beneath her boots, each step a somber echo of the weight of her heart. She kneels beside him her hands trembling as they reach out to gently close his unseeing eyes. The forest seems to hold its breath as if mourning alongside her. As Finn gazes down at the face of the man she has inadvertently taken the life of, a wave of sorrow washes over her. Gideon's features, once animated with life, now lie frozen in eternal repose. His scarlet cloak, dulled with dirt and stained with his own blood, seems to mock the violence that has unfolded. Tears prick at the corner of Finn's eyes, her chest tight with regret. It's one thing to kill goblins and bugbears, and something completely different to take the life of another human. She traces her fingers over the contours of Gideon's face, a silent apology whispered to the wind. In this moment, the line between friend and foe blurs, and Finn grapples with the weight of her actions. For her, this is a stark reminder of the irrevocable consequences of their chosen path. Back at the makeshift interrogation, as the party surrounds Roderick, their faces a mix of determination and anticipation, Elena takes the lead in questioning, her gaze steady and unwavering. We've got some questions for you, she begins, her tone firm but not unkind. We're looking for information, and you're going to give it to us, understand? Roderick, still defiant, shoots a venomous glare at Elena. Though it lacks some of its earlier intensity, the physical toll of the chase is evident, his breath coming in ragged gasps. You won't get anything out of me, he spits, but there's a tremor in his voice that betrays his bravado. Gareth steps forward, his presence imposing, and fixes Roderick with a stern gaze. We can do this the easy way? or the hard way, your choice, he grumbles, fingers idly tracing the hilt of his sword. Elena, eyes narrowed, leans in closer. You've seen what we're capable of. It doesn't have to be like this, she warns, a hint of genuine concern beneath her hardened exterior. Alden stands a bit apart, observing the exchange with calculating expression. You're outnumbered, friend. It's in your best interest to cooperate, he advises, his voice calm and measured. Finn approaches, her steps slow and deliberate. 
a palpable heaviness in her usually lively eyes. Her presence goes largely unnoticed in the intensity of the moment. Roderick's resistance begins to crack and he casts a furtive glance at Finn, his eyes widening imperceptibly at the sight of her pallor. The realization that they hold the upper hand dawns on him and with it a sense of resignation. Finally, Finn, her voice soft and tinged with sorrow, adds her voice to the chorus. We didn't come here to spill more blood. We just want answers, she implores, her gaze locked on Roderick's. It's a plea for understanding, a plea for a spark of humanity in this dark dance of interrogation. Elena's eyes bore into Roderick, her voice steady. Why are the Red Brands here? Who hired you? Roderick's gaze darts between the members of the party, the defiance in his eyes waning. He swallows hard, beads of sweat glistening on his forehead. The spider, that's what they call him he admits, his voice hoarse. He wants us to scare off adventurers, keep the locals in line. The spider, Gareth grumbles, his brow furrowing in thought. Do you know anything else about him? Where can we find him? Roderick shakes his head, a mix of fear and frustration in his eyes. I don't know. He keeps himself hidden. Only the higher ups know anything, and I'm not one of them. Gareth leans forward, eyes intense. And who's leading the red brands? Tell me everything you know. Roderick hesitates and then nods. Glassstaff is what they call him, a human wizard. His chambers are in the western end of our hideout beneath Tressendor Manor. He reveals a flicker of reluctance crossing his face. Alden's brow arches, intrigued. A wizard, you say? That is useful to know. He exchanges a glance with the others, gears turning in his mind. Vin, her voice barely above a whisper, adds her question. Anything else you can tell us? Any secrets about your hideout? Roderick hesitates and then nods. There are prisoners near the old crypts, guarded by skeletons. He reveals a flicker of guilt crossing his face. There's also a hideous eye monster. And what about this eye monster? Elena presses, her curiosity peaked. Roderick shudders, recalling the horrifying sight. In the lower part of the complex, it's disgusting. The weight of the information hangs in the air, a heavy mix of revelation and trepidation. The party exchanges glances, knowing that they're on the precipice of uncovering something much larger than they'd imagined. The party quickly heads over to the Townmaster's Hall and persuades Harbin Wester to imprison the three living red brands while they make their way to Tresendar Manor. As they're leaving the Townmaster's Hall, Elena overhears Harbin mumbling, What have I gotten myself into? I hope they don't come after me for this. With a sense of purpose, the party makes their way toward the east edge of town, drawn by the promise of discovery. As they draw closer, the low hillside reveals a manor's silhouette, commanding the landscape. It looms over them, a relic of a bygone era, its secrets waiting to be unraveled. As the party gets closer, they're met with an imposing sight. What was once a grand structure is mostly rubble, nestled among the trees and thickets. The manor exudes an aura of ancient history, its remaining walls weathered and marked by the passage of time. The party spends a few minutes searching the grounds for signs of life. Before too long, Gareth spots signs of foot traffic in the dirt leading to an intact cellar door. He shouts to the others, Over here, I found something. Gareth, always vigilant, takes the lead, his footsteps echoing softly on the stone. Keep your wits about you he advises, his hand resting on the hilt of his sword. The others nod in agreement, their senses attuned to any potential threat. With a steady push, Gareth opens the door, revealing a landing and descending steps. A cellar lies below. The room is lined with kegs and barrels, their contents hidden from casual view. It's clear that the Red Brands have taken the pains to keep their presence concealed, leaving no trace of their activities. Finn's curiosity gets the better of her, and she steps forward to examine the barrels. Let's see what they've been hoarding, she murmurs, her fingers slightly tracing the edge of a wooden cask. She can feel the rough texture under her touch, and her nimble fingers work to pry the lid open. The barrels yield a trove of provisions, salted meat, flour, sugar, apples, and ale. It's a cache that would sustain a small army for weeks. The party takes note, their practical minds considering the value of such supplies. Meanwhile, Elena approaches the large stone cistern, drawn by the clean, fresh water it holds. She leans over, peering into its steps. This water could be a valuable resource, she remarks thoughtfully. We should remember it's here. A glint of curiosity sparks in Finn as she eyes the cistern. I wonder if there's anything else hidden away, she muses. With that, she picks up a nearby pole and carefully probes the water's surface, hoping to uncover any secrets that might lie beneath. As Finn's pole dips into the cistern, it brushes against something submerged. 
Her heart quickens with anticipation as she carefully retrieves a waterproof satchel, its contents safe from the water's reach. She opens it to reveal a collection of valuable items, a potion of healing, a potion of invisibility, about 50 gold pieces, and some travel clothing. Gareth, glancing around, senses a shift in the atmosphere. We've lingered here long enough. Keep your senses sharp he cautions, aware that their activities might not go unnoticed. The party gathers their newfound provisions and treasure, their minds focused on the challenges that lie ahead. They know that every step they take within this hidden stronghold brings them closer to the heart of the Red Brand's operation, and closer to the answers they seek. The party decides to proceed through the north doorway, finding themselves in a dimly lit hall that bears the weight of history. The air is heavy with dust, and every footstep echoes in the silence, punctuating the somber atmosphere. As they move deeper into the hall, their gazes fall upon the faux columns that adorn the walls at regular intervals. Each one stands as a silent sentinel, a testament to the craftsmanship that once graced these halls. The double doors at the far end of the hall gleam with a verdigris patina, revealing the passage of time. As the party cautiously proceeds down the trapped hall, Gareth, leads the way, and without warning, his foot strikes a particular stone tile, its slight shift triggering a chain reaction. Loose tiles and breakaway timbers give way beneath him, sending him plummeting into the concealed pit with a startled shout. And that is where we leave our group of adventurers. If you're enjoying the content, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss on what happens next. Thanks a ton for watching. Special thanks goes out to my patrons. You're all amazing. We will catch you in the next one.